and welcome back to Big Oggy World. So today we are doing an Easter recipe and it's something that I've not done for a very long time and I don't think we've done an awful lot of bread type recipes on the channel at all. So we are going to make a hot cross bun loaf. So to do that you're going to need a two pound loaf tin which you have buttered well. This will not work with a liner, so you need to just grease your tin well. We've gotten the recipe from the Great British Food magazine. Um, and basically, it's going to be a long one, guys. So, to start off with, we need to sieve our flour and our spices into a mixing bowl. As per usual, John will put all of the recipe ingredients down below so that you know exactly what it is. So we sift that in. Like so. In go our spices. Like that. And then you take your milk, which is warmed to sort of blood temperature, I guess you would call it, and you add your yeast into the milk. It's seven grams of yeast. If you um, buy it in the little tiny packets, that's exactly one packet. I think they come in seven gram sachets, but mine, in a little tin so I, I measured out seven grams. Give it a good stir into your milk. You sort of want to try and dissolve it a bit if possible. While that's doing its little thing there for a minute, you're gonna stir your sugar into your dried ingredients, like that. Give it a whoosh around. I'm gonna use my hands because I don't see that there's any other, actually I might try a knife first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add our wet now to our dry and try to bring it together as a dough. So sort of make a well in the centre of your fried goods. Add in your yeast mix. Try and make sure you get the yeast out of the jug, obviously. Otherwise, you won't have enough raisin agent in there. Just scrape that off. Into that, we're going to add our softened butter. And last of all, our eggs. The colour of those eggs. They do actually state to use Burford Browns, which is what we have used, but we do quite often get these because they're just such great eggs. I think they're probably John's favourite. And there you go. And now you need to mix this into a dough. So I'm going to use a knife. don't have to worry too much about mixing it all perfectly you just need to get it into a doughy lump and then once you've got it into that state you can either pour it out onto a lightly floured work surface 
or put it into um, a stand mixer with a dough hook and you're going to knead it either way for about seven minutes. So we're nearly... So it's quite... You should get your hands in and use your hands to sort of bring it together. Smells lovely already because you can smell the spices. Now, once we've kneaded this, we're going to need to let it prove. And that is a problem for us anyway, here at the minute, because it's an absolutely awful day outside. And quite frankly, it's not very warm. And because we don't have an airing cupboard, you know, you, you hear the thing about, oh, put your bread in the airing cupboard to prove. We don't actually have an airing cupboard either. So, the thing that we are going to do, and you can do this if you have a problem with that too, is to boil a kettle and put a dish or a roasting tin or something full of boiling water into your oven, the bottom of your oven, which will not be on. Don't put it in with the oven on. Put your dish with your um, dough in above it close the door and leave it do its business and that will warm the oven up enough and create a steamy atmosphere which is perfect for dough. So John do you mind getting over my mixture for me a minute please? That is a heavy lump. It's going to save me a lot of work but obviously if you like to do it by hand you do it by hand whatever suits you. So I'm going to put my bowl of dough into my mixer Put it down and that is going to mix now for seven minutes so I'll come back once that's done. So if you're unsure what kneading actually is, all it is is getting your dough and sort of pushing, pushing it forward and pulling it back like a forward and back movement. Now this dough is lovely and elasticy, which is what you're kneading for. It's to release the glutens in the flour so that they become nice and stretchy. And those are the things that cause the rise when you rest it. So this dough has probably had a good seven, if not closer to 10 minutes. I just wanted to show you. So there's our ball, perfectly round, not a problem. And that is going to go into, back into our mixing bowl, which I have now greased. So in it pops. Then we need to cover the top with cling film, just to keep you know the heat and stuff in there. And this I'm going to put in my oven with the um, roasting dish full of boiled water underneath and I'm going to leave it for an hour or two depending but you need your dough to double in size so in it goes. Close the door on the oven and Clear your mess up and then rest up for a while. Have a cup of tea, maybe some lunch, whatever. We just need to wait now. It's just a waiting game. Welcome back. So, our dough has had an hour and a half in the oven with a, um, a roasting tin of hot water below it and it's come up beautifully. So the next thing we need to do is knock it back but we're going to also add our fruit to it. Now you will see in the recipe that the fruit is sultanas, cranberries and dried mixed peel. There is no mixed peel going into ours because I don't really like it and the kids aren't that keen on it. So all I've done is the 60 grams 
of mixed peel that should have gone in, I've added an extra 30 of cranberries and an extra 30 of sultanas. So I'm going to mix fruit together with the orange zest because we're going to add it a bit at a time and knead it into our dough. So I want the fruits to be mixed so I don't get like a whole pile of zest in one area and then a whole pile of cranberries in another area. I want it mixed and even. So I'm just chucking it into a bowl, mixing it around like that and that's ready to add. So we're going to tip out our dough <laughs> or not. Why are you struggling with that? I hear a noise in the background. It's our cat growling. It's another cat outside. It's, oh, it's lovely it's really and warm. Brown. There we go. Keep your bowl because you're going to need it again in a minute. So we're going to knead it lightly. You can see it's lovely and smooth and springy. Now, we're going to add a few spoonfuls at a time. and knead it in like that obviously the more you get in the more you'll see it come through when you move the dough around don't worry about getting it on your table it's all going into your dough And we're going to keep going until we've got all of this fruit in. So I'll be back in a little while. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. But okay, so that's my fruit all in. And it's going to go back in to the um, oiled bowl. bowl. Sorry. Cover it back over with your cling film. And for me, back in the oven for another hour. For you, back to wherever your warm spot is, be it the airing cupboard or whatever. So we're gonna leave it another hour and then hopefully we'll be ready to start portioning it up. See you in a bit. So as you can see, our dough has risen again. So now what we need to do is get it out and weigh it and then divide it into eight equal portions. I would just split half and half and half. I wouldn't even weigh it. Come on, that's just perfect, that's fine. Right. So we need eight equal pieces. Now, you can be extremely accurate and do it on the scales, or you can just do what John just said and that's do. Well, now you split it into two, you cut them into four, into quarters, and you've got what you need. All you're doing is making buns. You but, you're, buns. but you're not actually making buns. That's the secret here because we are making a loaf. So what we're doing, John, is we're going to make these into fat sausages. Okay. Well, I do love a hot cross bun. I do love a sausage. Uh, so uh, you sort of need a sausage -y sort of type shape and then you're going to stand them into your loaf tin like that so you stand them on their end yeah stand yeah. them upright so you sort of like try and get a sausagey shape although the dough is so soft it's quite tricky i'm sure they'll spread into the shape that's the i think the plan in fact i'm gonna have a real problem getting all of them in here I need to be a bit more sausagey, I think. Yeah. Bobby. But the thing is, as soon as you let them go, they're they escape. They're they? rolling back out again. Oh, squidge up buns. Just make them friendly. That'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure if you looked in the book, they're all perfect shape and size. It probably took ages to do right, that. Right, they're in. There you go. Now. Oops, missed that one. 
The oh, next thing. What makes your fruit leaf bun? Most of it end up in your mouth. Next thing to do, again, is put it into a large plastic bag. Make sure that there's space in it. And back in for another hour. Woohoo! So is this double proof now or triple proof? This is triple, I guess, triple if you want. Proof. I mean, to be fair, at this point, I've had a conversation with John saying, is it really worth it, all this? We could just go and buy a bun. Yeah. But, but that's if you like not... baking, it's one of those things you, you want to do is learn how to make buns. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not the spirit of it just to go and buy a bun, John. The thing is, these will be nicer. Absolutely, they'll be perfect. So, that's going to stay for another hour. And then as it's coming to the end of its proven time, we are going to make the um, paste that you make your crosses with. So I'll tidy up and we'll see you shortly for the last bit. Hopefully. The last bit. Okay, so I'll come back. As you can see, I've got a slight problem. Me buns. My your buns are too big, love. Are like escaping over the edge of the tin. And they've still got another 15 minutes or so to be tucked in their warmness. We always say on this channel, we show you exactly what happens. This is the first time we've made this recipe. This is going to happen to you too. It'll be fine. Tap all back in again. It'll be lovely. There. Right. So what I'm going to do is I've stopped proving it for now. Turn that off because that's going to go off in a minute. Now what we need to do is preheat the oven to 160 fan. 180 if you're you haven't got a fan um we're going to make the stuff the paste that makes the crosses on top now the <laughs> the problem is is spotting where one ends and the next well, one begins uh, it's still going to be a loaf so you use your flour the plain flour that you've got left you need a teaspoon of sunflower oil two to three tablespoons of cold water I think it was yeah cold water mix that into a smooth paste it says now you're going to need a small piping bag which I don't have not a small one anyway so I'm going to use a sandwich bag um, I'm hoping it's going to work if it doesn't well then it won't but we'll give it a go anyway this is when you need to try and pipe your crosses. The problem with my sandwich bags are they are gusseted. John, could you help me a minute, please? Mm -hmm. If you hold that open. Now, I'm gonna need to make a small incision to try and pipe that off. Guys, this could end up being an absolute disaster, but even if it is, our loaf will still be delicious without the crosses. So. It'll just be a bit angry. Won't be cross at all, will it? I'm not going to do individual, I'm just going to do a line because. Well, I think that's, that's what you do. Quite frankly. No, even if nothing else goes right today, I've now worked out how they do the white lines, white crosses on a hot cloth bun. There you go. I never knew it was made with a paste. I always thought strangely it was actually part of the dough. It was just a, like a pale version of the dough. But not. There you go. Now that didn't go too badly at all, did it? No. That is going to go into your preheated oven for around 30 minutes and hopefully it will stay in the tin. Yeah, get not, it in quick. It might it... go like this, but whichever way it goes, it, I mean, you can't fault the dough. The dough is very oh, it's proactive. Yeah, certainly an absolute <laughs> Right, so I'm going to put it in for 30 minutes and we'll be back. So, my worldly friends if you've made it to this far congratulations give yourself a big pat on the back it's finally ready 
It is quarter to five and we started at 11 o'clock maybe. Yeah. The, uh, the monster has risen love. It has risen. It's a big boy um, and it's a little bit on the wonky side. Yeah. All but. I can say is the dough was very active which is, is good. Surely to God that's good in a, a bunny sort of hot cross thing way. The crosses stayed, which was again another good thing. You've only got one like wonky corner, actually, if you think about it. Yeah, I mean this side's a bit of an overhang, but pretty good. Um, so what I'm doing now is I have mixed together and boiled slightly for a little while, anyway, the orange juice and the marmalade. Um, the ideal is that as soon as your bun comes out the oven. You tip it directly out onto a rack and then you paint it with the glaze which is what I'm doing. Now I'm not sure whether you should glaze the sides but there's a hell of a lot of glaze there to go on the top so I'm presuming you do and because the bun or the thing is so hot it will soak in and it won't be wet. That so, looks pretty good actually. We were very panic stuck for a while weren't we? We were. Um, and as you can see, there is really no demarcation between our actual buns. Whereas if you look at the recipe, and take that off of there, you can clearly see their little, yeah, their little buns. Um, but you know, ours is real world, okay. and yeah. and I here think ours was a more was a more active yeast probably. And to be honest, when they do things for magazines, they probably do about a dozen of them to exactly. get the right one. It takes quite a lot of time. And the other thing is, is that, you know, we're a family cooking channel and we will show you the good, the bad and the ugly. And this is what happens when you follow a recipe. It had obviously a beautiful rise, yeah, which I, is great. I really think it looks actually pretty good. Um, my only thoughts, because you know, we, we are like you. We are basically just trying out stuff. We're trying out recipes. We, we pick up magazines sometimes. We go, let's go for it. Never done it before. Haven't done any real bread or bun baking for a long okay. time. Um, and these are the sort of issues that you will get. So don't don't panic about the fact it doesn't always look like it's supposed to do in the pictures. This is this is real Absolutely. cooking. This, We're showing you to do it. This is gonna be delicious. It is. And this is perfect for my family yeah. because I've left out the things that we don't like. I've left out the mixed pickle and things and I've put extra of the stuff that we do like in it. It's a lovely big loaf so yeah. I have no qualms that this is going to be, it, it says it's best to eat on the day that you make it. Yeah. I have no qualms that cut, my teenagers are going thick, to toast the edges. This. Fine. One thing I will say, please please don't be put off by the amount of time that it takes because of the rising. The actual recipe is very easy to follow it's not an awful lot of work. The biggest issue is time waiting for it to prove. So if you're at home for the day and you're doing other things anyway, why not get one going and then carry on doing what you're doing when it's proven. So hope you like it. Please give us a thumbs up if you do. Let me know if you try it and if you get any more sort of closer to the picture than ours did. John will put a picture in later when we slice it just so that you can see what it looks like in the middle. Um, hit the notification bell, subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, brilliant, well done, thank you very much. And do come across onto Facebook and join our Facebook page, The Big Oggy World or Big Oggy World, where there's lots and lots of bits and pieces over there. So happy Easter everyone, hope you enjoy it and we will see you all again really soon. Bye for now.